So we're supposed to match the function with one of the graphs down here. <clears throat> um, so eventually uh, we'll get to know these functions a little bit better and you'll know how they operate. Uh, but for right now, uh, let's think about what tangent of x is. Tangent of x and cotangent of x are shapes that we haven't really studied yet because we've only studied sine and cosine so far. Um, yeah, I think the best way is just to think about some points. So uh, let's start with tangent x. And let's plug in some points. Let's plug in um, got x and y table and plug in points that are easy with trig functions. If you plug in a zero for tangent of x, <clears throat> remember tangent is sine over cosine. And if you plug in zero in for x, sine of zero, an angle of zero, this is zero, and cosine of zero is one. Those are values that we studied before. And if you're having trouble with where I got those real quickly, it's because uh, a quick way of thinking about sine and cosine is that sine is the y coordinates in the unit circle, cosine is the x coordinates. So there's our dot at, at an angle of zero. We haven't rotated all from the initial side. Cosine is the x coordinate, and sine is the y coordinate. That's at one comma zero. So that's how I came up with zero for sine, one for cosine. So zero divided by one, that is defined. That's zero. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to delete that graph though. Oops. This is one. Uh, let's try something else. Let's try maybe pi. We'll try a few other radians that are well known. If you plug in pi, then that's 180 degrees. So now sine is zero, cosine is negative one. Zero divided by negative one gives us zero again. Oh whoa! I put why did I put one here? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just just to recap, if you plug in a zero for x, sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, so zero divided by one is one is zero. I almost said it again. Zero divided by one is zero. I guess I didn't get good sleep last night. If you plug in pi, zero divided by negative one, that's also zero. And then we can get a few more. Maybe we'll try like 90 degrees, which is pi over two. If you draw a 90 degree angle in the unit circle. Then you've got, uh, let's see, the, the 0 for x, 1 for y. So this is 1 divided by 0. So that's undefined. You can't divide by 0. So we're looking for a vertical asymptote at pi over 2 because of the divide by 0 error. So let's see what the graphs that we have. Um, this one has a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, right? It's got that red dotted line. But at 0 on the x, we don't have a dot at 0 on the y, like our data table says we're supposed to. So this graph is not tangent of x. Okay, 0 on the x, 0 on the y, this graph is not tangent of x. 0 on the x, 0 on the y, this is possibly tangent of x. Look, it's got the vertical asymptote at pi over 2. And if we go to pi on the x-axis, we should be back at 0. This is our graph. Okay, so This is tangent of x. And so that's just the characteristic shape of tangent of x that you'll get used to over time. It's got a lot of those vertical asymptotes because tangent is sine over cosine. You're dividing by cosine of x, so there's lots of opportunities for those divide by 0 errors. Okay, so that's uh, 4 and minus tangent x. Let's see what else we can do. Okay, for the other ones, remember secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So this is an equivalent way of writing secant. And so that also has possibilities for divide by zero errors, right? Because cosine of x could equal zero sometimes. Cosine of x is the x coordinates on the unit circle, and the x coordinate is zero when we get to 90 degrees, we get to pi over 2, right? This has an x coordinate of zero. Uh, and then we also have negative pi over 2, uh, you could do, let's see, if you keep adding 2 pi, right, cosine is uh, has a period of 2 pi if, there, if b is 1. So if you had 2 pi, that's, that's 5 pi over 2. These should all be vertical asymptotes. And you could say negative 5 pi over 2 because you could back yourself up full period. Okay, so which graphs have vertical asymptotes of pi over 2? This graph does. This graph does not. This graph, not, this graph does not have, uh, uh, wait, this graph does, but that's already, we already figured out that it's tangent. So there's only one graph that has a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, and that's graph number 2. So that's why we know to choose that one. And again, 
Uh, right now, we're just using some uh, some properties of each of these graphs from what we've studied before to help us identify them because it's just like sine cosine. The first time you're presented with those functions, you don't know what they look like until you start digging in, playing with some values. Same thing with these ones. Uh, again, you could go back in there with secant, you could plug in some values, see what's supposed to spit out. Like if you plug in uh, 0 for x, then 1 divided by cosine of 0, that's going to equal 1. And that gives you a dot right where we expect it to be. 0 on the x, 1 on the y. Um, let's try here. Let's While we're on the same vein, let's do cosine of x, uh, cosecant of x. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. It's 1 over sine of x. So same thing. You want to look for vertical asymptotes when sine is 0. So sine is 0. When the angle is zero, or when the angle is pi, uh, pi or negative pi, right? Because those y coordinates are zero on the unit circle. So we're looking for pi, negative pi, zero. Look, negative pi, zero, pi. These are vertical asymptotes. It gets infinitely close, but doesn't touch those vertical lines. So that means three is going to be cosecant. <clears throat> And then cotangent, look, tangent and cotangent are just reciprocals of one another, right? So what you should be seeing is the opposite shape happening. You could do the same thing where you could plug in some values, but, oh, sorry, uh, cotangent is this graph over here, graph number one. I cut out the thing. Because it, it does the same type of shape as tangent, the same type of uh, line repeating itself, but it's just going in the opposite direction. And the reason why it has a different uh, starting place for the vertical asymptote is because think about what cotangent is. If tangent is sine over cosine, then the reciprocal cotangent should be cosine over sine. And so sine is 0 at x equals 0 at x equals pi. So that's why you see those vertical asymptotes. But again, you could make a data table, plug in some values, see what it spits out, and eventually you're going to be able to whittle down the correct graph. So they all just take time to get used to. Um, honestly, outside of, uh, I guess, one time when I was studying, uh, not just one time, in machine learning, um, it, this is probably pretty boring, so you can just stop the video if you want, but in machine learning, uh, there's some things we do that involve tangent of x. Um, I'm trying to think of the technical word for it. Uh, an activation function. In machine learning, when you're trying to use an activation function, which is a function that... Um, uh, that helps you determine how much impact one neuron has in a neural network. Tangent function sometimes used. Um, I think it's usually reciprocal of tangent, though. I don't know. I, I guess I have to go back and look at that math. But um, my experience, I have not used these functions too much outside of a math classroom. But uh, maybe if somebody decides to go into some sort of uh, more in-depth computer science application or if they decide to do engineering they can come back and tell me because I have been told that people in the engineering program have used trig functions to model some real-world situations